Today we're going to go over how to place an ultrasound guided subclavian central line. The reason this line is a preferred line is because it is both cleaner than a femoral central line and is more comfortable for the patient than a jugular line. Obviously the risks include pneumothorax and bleeding, but if you do this under ultrasound guidance, you decrease the risk of those happening. So the first thing you need to do is you need to examine the patient's anatomy before you get sterile or set up your line. You're going to have the patient laying flat on the bed or even in a little bit of reverse Trendelenburg. You have the patient's face facing away from you and you have their arm down at their side. So you have access to the entire side of their chest. I usually like to start on the right side of the patient. However, it doesn't matter. Wherever the anatomy is better. You're going to take your linear probe and you're going to place gel, enough gel so that you can see. And you're going to start looking. You start distally all the way out by the arm. And what you want to do is you want to start at the head of the humerus and you want to follow the clavicle proximally towards the sternal notch. What you're looking for on the anatomy is you're looking for where the subclavian vein runs over the first rib. And what that does is that gives you a landing spot where you can put your line in, but you decrease the risk of going through and through the vein and puncturing the lung behind it. So you start from out here at the humerus and you start moving in, looking for your anatomy, okay? Usually the first thing you will see is soft tissue and a rib shadow, and then you will see the subclavian artery pulsating with the subclavian vein just next to it. Usually it'll have some respiratory variation, and if you can't see it very well, you can ask the patient to do a Valsalva, and that should make the vein pop out bigger. You can also always put the patient in more reverse Trendelenburg to help you see it. If you can't find the vein, then try the other side. And if you still can't find the vein, then you probably need to pick a different site. Once you have your vein and you see that it's the anatomy is acceptable, that's when you want to set up your line. So you're going to put your ultrasound down and you're going to set up your equipment. The equipment you need is going to be a central line kit, seven French, 20 centimeters, okay? Triple woman, if you're putting in a triple woman. You need a sterile probe and gel for the ultrasound. And you're gonna wanna take one of your sterile bundles because it's gonna have your drapes and your caps and all the extra things that you're going to need. End of the day, when you open the central line kit, this is what you're going to have. And you wanna set up the equipment in the order that you need it. So you start with your needle and your syringe already attached with the bevel up and facing the numbers. Next to that, you're going to put your wire, which is the second thing you're going to need. Next to that, you put your scalpel, then your dilator, then your central line. The triple lumen line, you need to take off the white cap because that's where your wire is going to exit. It's not always white, but it's always the shortest one, okay? And then you have the holder for the line, which holds it in place if you don't put it all the way in. And of course, a suture and a dressing and somewhere to put your sharps. So once you have all of your equipment set up, you're going to clean the patient. You're going to use at least three chlorhexidine or iodine wipes to clean the patient, and then you're going to drape the patient, okay? Make sure that the drape leaves you enough space that you have where to find your anatomy again with the ultrasound, and you're also going to put a sterile cover on the ultrasound. Once that's all done, you're going to place your line. A couple of tips for your line. First of all, make sure that when you numb up the patient with lidocaine, that you do a broad wheel that's not doesn't distort the anatomy. So do a lot of lidocaine sub-Q in different patches. Do no more than half a cc to a cc in one particular patch of skin so it doesn't distort the anatomy. Number two is like I said before, make sure the bevel of your needle is up toward the numbers so you always know where bevel up is. And when you're going in, you always, 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 as with all ultrasound guided procedures, want to keep an eye on your needle. As long as you can see your needle tip, you're not going to cause a pneumothorax and you're not going to go into the artery. If you can't see your needle tip, 
then you need to back up and find it again. The most common pitfall of these procedures is losing the tip of the needle and not knowing where you're going with the tip of the needle. Once you're in the vein and you get flash, you wanna drop your angle so that when you're threading the wire, it doesn't go to the back of the vein. So once you're in and you're going to thread the wire, you drop your angle holding the needle steady and you start threading your wire. The thing to remember about threading the wire is that the first few centimeters are going to go smoothly because that's while the wire is going through the needle. Once it exits the needle, that's when you start to feel a little bit of resistance. That's okay. You just have to be able to advance the needle, okay? If you feel like you're getting stuck, if you notice there's a little hook at the end of the wire, sometimes that's hitting the back of the vein or it's getting hung up on something. The first thing you can do is you can spin the wire so that the hook is facing a different direction. The next thing you can do is you can actually straighten out the hook. And the way you do that is you hold the wire proximally and you pull distally. And that straightens out the end of the wire and can help you move it back and forth. Once your wire is safely in, you're gonna thread your dilator on top of the wire. And once the dilator is flush with the skin, you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna make a nick in the skin, okay? I recommend using a piece of gauze to hold where you nick the skin so that it doesn't create a mess when it bleeds and it keeps your area nice and clean and clear, okay? Once that's done, you're gonna dilate over the wire, okay? And when you dilate, you don't push from back here because the wire can kink. You're going to hold the dilator very close to the skin and you're gonna do a twisting and pushing motion, okay? While you do that, you're gonna hold the wire back here and make sure it stays nice and loose in the dilator. Once you've done dilating the subcutaneous, all the soft tissue, you don't need to dilate the vein, just the soft tissue. Then you're gonna back out your dilator and you're gonna thread your line, okay? Never, ever, ever, ever let go of the wire. Once your line is in, then you pull the wire out, okay? This piece is to hold the line in place if you don't thread it all the way in you place the white piece on the line itself, and then you lock it in place with the blue piece. Once you're done with that, you sew the line in and you place a dressing. After all that, ultrasound to confirm you don't have a pneumothorax, gases to confirm that you're in the vein and not the artery, and x-ray to confirm that you're in the right place.